Welcome to Cambridge Health Alliance Health is Well. My name is Roberta Robinson. I'm Director of Marketing and Outreach for the Geriatric Division of the Cambridge Health Alliance. And today I'm excited to have our guest, Jack Hopper, who is a rec uh, recovery coach, co coordinator. Co coach coordinator. And so, Jack, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you the, for being here. The more we can get the word out, the better. You That's know? it. Um, knowledge is power. That's so, right. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us what a recovery coach does? Yeah, uh, the recovery coach model is, is um, a unique um, um, model that it's peer-to-peer. -peer. So anyone that gets into it, when I go to see somebody to take the detox or in the hospital in the, in the ED, um, I have the lived experience. So there was always a missing piece between the uh, social work, nurses, case managers, doctors don't have all the time to give to the the numbers of folks coming through the ED, so coming that, through the ED for what? Uh, uh, for alcoholism, overdose, um, yeah. So, so that's your work. That's your population. You work with the people that come in if they are either um, legless, as we say, right, uh, right, in, incredibly intoxicated. Those are the ones I love. Yeah, that's <laughs> what, that's what. And especially if they don't want to talk to me, I ask the doctors to make sure that I see them. Okay. Because those are probably the ones that I should be seeing. Right. You know? Um, and, so, and people that are, have drug overdoses that get Overdoses, uh, to the I pay special attention to those folks because they're, they're really at a dangerous place where they've basically been just brought back to life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll get up and leave, but I, I really try to um, impress upon them how... Um, dangerous, it, dangerous it is for them to leave the emergency room and use again once they've already overdosed the likelihood of them overdosing again is higher so yeah so my favorite part of the job at, at Cambridge Hospital and Everett Hospital is is meeting someone like that befriending them spending time with them um, making calls referrals all around the state and usually I have to make a lot of calls because the, the, the availability isn't always there. And then take them in my car and drive them to Tewksbury, Danvers, wherever, uh, there's, wh a wherever there's a place for them. Yes, and, and, and something happens on that, that ride together that the, it's a connection that they don't forget, I don't forget, and I learn more about them on the ride to treatment um, where they tend to open up a lot more. They're at a place where they're just beaten down and they open up, where they're, they're a little guarded, you know, in the hospital, okay. in the hospital setting, you know? So mm -hmm. the trust isn't always there in that, in that setting. So getting them out of there, and I find that is, that's like a really important piece. And then- They're not, also in a different place. Uh, maybe they've come, <clears throat> they, when they come to the hospital, they're ill. Right, and right. and once they clear a little bit, then then you get them. Right, right, right. They, they don't discharge them before they're able to. Right, exactly. When when it's safe, and it's like a relay. When when it's safe right. for them to go, right, yeah. right, and and their blood alcohol or, um, you know, they, they, the doctors and nurses are very good at taking care of that piece, and they'll say, okay, they're good to go, and and then and then it's then I take over from there, mm -hmm. and it's not just about. Um, uh, shuttling, I don't, you know, or else I would just need a bus. It's about the connection with the addict or the, or the alcoholic that's crucial and that trust that forms. And I have a unique position where I give, when I give them my card, it's my cell phone that I can answer. I can go out to coffee with them. I can drive them in my car where obviously uh, a caseworker, a social worker wouldn't be doing that. And that connection is, is crucial. So, and then not just dropping them off there and saying, okay, that's your job. Making sure that I have a plan so they can go from detox, which is just physically getting the alcohol or dr uh, drugs out of their body. And about how long does that last? <clears throat> Five to seven days. Five um, seven. Usually DPH pays for, for uh, like say if someone has mass health, um, uh, you know, so, but then from there, they start to feel a little better. That's when I want them to go into a CSS, or we used to call it a holding, uh, while they're waiting to get into a halfway house or sober living. So, so what's this holding? Explain it for us. Yeah. So the whole the holding is is basically an extended um, stay. 
because the detox is so at, short. At the uh, detox? No, no, no. they're transported uh, from there, from, from the uh, detox to a CSS, or holding, if you will, what? where they have two weeks there. Where they're like doing a transitional meetings. place. Yes, exactly. Okay. As a matter of fact, they call it Transitions in River Street in, in, in Dorchester. Yeah, oh. that's the name of it. That's one of them. So getting them in there, it sort of gets a little time under their belt. So they're not going from detoxification to the street where they just got high. Mm -hmm. and, and we wonder why. Chances they, are repeating the pattern, we being want, a frequent flyer. Exactly. Um, increases, e right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and it's a tough um, science where you, you can't really um, quantify the success rate. For me, a success rate is if I make a connection with a man or a woman. It might not be the first, second, third, fourth, maybe it's the sixth time that they come through and they ask the doctor or the nurse, who is that coach? And that's, that's where I have an opening because I've made that contact, that, that connection before with them. Mm -hmm. There's a relationship that's formed already. So uh, that's, that's so important. You know? Right. And so it, it, it may not be, as you pointed out, it may not be the first time they may resist you. Um, most of the time. But you plant the seed, right? right you plant right the on. seed the first time, and at least they know you exist. Right on. Uh, um, yes. They probably don't know you exist prior to that first time, right? Yes, and they're pres pleasantly su surprised when they find out, wow, I didn't know we had coaches in here, and every time I come here, I just leave, and you know, uh, the doctors and nurse do all they can to hang on to somebody and to physically patch them up and, 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 and then, they, then they leave. So this missing piece was uh, connecting the dots, right. continuum of care. Right. So I've actually had, had folks that overdosed in the, um, in, you know, and, and were brought back by an EMT. They bring them into us, into the hospital. I see them, I take them to detox. They go to a CSS from there and then maybe they have a job, so they go to a, a job and they come to IOP, which is intensive outpatient, so they can still work and do treatment where they're doing a couple of meetings a day. They have other peers that are trying to stay clean and sober. So I'll actually see them go right through the process instead of just, um, you know, one and done. Mm. So I'll see them, you know, I'll talk to them when they're leaving the detox, when, they're, when they've got a spot and they're leaving the uh, CSS or the holding, right? And so I'm following through them. And then I'll walk into my office in North Suffolk. Uh, I work for North Suffolk Mental Health in East Boston. I'll walk in there and they're sitting there waiting for me to do the, uh, the outpatient. And I'm doing relapse prevention with them, probably 20 or 30 people over at 14 Porter Street in East Boston. So I mean, I've already had a beautiful relationship with this kid before they come into the IOP. Mm. Where they're coming in fresh with their, all the other staff, I've already, I have a relationship with them. And that, that special bond that happens when you catch them at their lowest spot in their life and you connect with them there, it's, it's, a, it's a special, special, even if they relapse, I've gotten texts, Jack, just thinking about you, I'm not doing too good right now, but I'll call you. I, I think I'm getting ready to 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 do something, mm -hmm. and then you sometimes know. it takes a few times, yes. and sometimes uh, they have to hit rock bottom, right? Right. Then there's only one right. place to go. Right, but and, but and, you bring hope to them. Yeah, I I, I certainly hope so. I mean, I mean help and hope. Right. Hope of a better life. Right on, right on, Roberta. You've got it. I mean, I I'm 28 years clean, so no matter what they been through and, and prior to working at North Suffolk I worked at Span so I went into all the state prisons and would start a relationship with men and when they were getting ready to come out I'd pick them up and take them to halfway houses and while they were in if they were a couple of months out of uh, lo looking at a release I did groups with them in there so it, it seamlessly you know and now I fell into North Suffolk and I get to be in the emergency rooms I get to uh, tomorrow I'll be in drug court in Lynn Oh, so explain that to what happens yeah. in drug court. So in, in, in drug court, basically, um, it's given, uh, instead of trying to arrest our way out of this problem, this epidemic, it's given a, a young, uh, not always young, but a person, an addict or an alcoholic, a shot at not going to jail, which we, we've learned doesn't work because mm -hmm. they come out and, and, and yes. Repeat the pattern. Right on. Do right. what they know. Right. So what happens now is every group, I mean, every week, I'll go in 
and I do a group at 10:30 to 11:30 with all the um, with all the folks. And after that, that we have a little break and we go into drug court, and the the judge calls them up, and um, somebody from my team has already met with the judge at a team meeting. Okay. With social workers, et cetera, and and probation officers, so we know what's going on with everyone. Where a judge will actually say, what do you think, Jack? How's he doing? I say, he's really trying. I mean, he had a bump in the road. And so when they go up in front of the judge, the judge is like, well, I understand from the recovery coach uh, that, that you've really been, you know, giving it a good go this time. We're going we're, we're gonna to stick with you on this. We're not going to jail you for a mistake you made. And pretty much every judge I, I've done, uh, East Boston, Chelsea, uh, Lynn Drug Court, and North Suffolk does... Um, Malden, um, uh, Charlestown, we have a presence in all the courts, mm. okay? And so, so, and that carries over because we'll see them, we'll get them into our, our Meridian uh, house in East Washington, which is a therapeutic community. And is that a halfway house? It, it's, it's a therapeutic community, uh, which is a little stricter uh, halfway house, but every day they come to the IOP. Oh. So, so do they live at this? Um, yes, they Meridian do. House? Yes, they yeah. do. It's a beautiful there. program. Yeah. It's still the old school. You're, it's like almost a year that you're there. Wow. And get get your sea legs under you and get a job, and and get your head they clear. They help you get a job? No. Okay. No. I mean, well, they send you out on a job search, and there's always they network. Believe me, they you know John has a job. You know has a connection at Home Depot. Um, you know, Mary has a connection for waitressing somewhere else. So they, 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 they build a community there. Mm. So between the outpatient, between the drug court groups, the most beautiful thing to see is to see someone that, that was, you know, we've got a fruit fly in here. Uh, <laughs> the most beautiful thing to see is when you've seen somebody come into court, beaten and battered, and the judge says, what do you think? Are you willing to do the number? Are you really, are you really ready for this? And they say yes. See them go, in, and I'll take them to detox from Lynn Drug Court, and then see them when they get a um, at a certain point in the halfway house, they can uh, come out, you know, to the to the IOP and see them graduate a year later, and they've got their children, they've got their partners, their you know wives, their kids show up for the graduation. I mean, and it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the mayor it shows up. It is a up. big deal. It's a it very is a big, big deal. deal. Yeah, it's a, it's very a chance big deal. of a new life. Yep, yep. Which is a very big and, deal, and, right? And you want to see, you know, grown men get emotional. Uh, judges that have dealt with somebody that's that that have been devastated by the disease of addiction, and when they come up, the um, the, the judge will actually have them up. In, in front of the room to say something at you know up up on the stand there where the judge is usually sitting and and you see folks that are really moved to tears because there's a transformation that happens and and it took a, a village yeah you know the 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 days of and, and you know you, you had mentioned a bottom these days we can't really wait for someone to hit the bottom we've got to bring the bottom up to them because now if someone has a relapse on what they're doing, what's out there now with the fentanyl and the car, they, they, they don't get a chance to have a little bump in the road or, or wait, wait, wait for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, I mean, if someone's overdosed, I'll go into the hospital room and I'm like, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, dying and having to be brought back to life with Narcan is pretty much as bottom as I could think of. Yeah. So really, they can't, they can't argue that, that, that their life's unmanageable and they need help. Now, whether they're <clears throat> ready for it at that time is another is another oh. deal. But I just keep at them. I've got their phone numbers. I'll reach out to them. Just checking in on you. And you'd be surprised how much that moves them about, um, wow, here's somebody that cared about me when I was in front of the judge. This is somebody that helped me when I was in IOP, got me into a halfway house. I've got a new life. I've got a job. You know, I'm a productive, tax-paying member of society. And, you know, so to see that, when I take somebody uh, to detox and, and get them started on their journey, when I drive home, I'm, I'm bulletproof. It's, it's a I, beautiful I, thing. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Because 
the numbers aren't good out here for 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 kids. And and once somebody, you know, once somebody is at least willing to go and get detox, that's a little opening there, a little crack in the in the you know. A and big that's, crack. That's what. Yes. Right. Yes. Because if they, if people don't want help, then then. Right. There's nothing we can do. Everyone gets to make a decision for themselves, even a bad one. Right. 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 Even right. something that we might think is yeah. better for them, but if they, if they're not Good ready, point. Good there's point. nothing we can do. Right. Good point. So you talk. You mentioned kids a couple of times, but do you strictly work I'm with 60. kids? I'm sixty. I'm sixty. So when I say kids, <laughs> it could be anybody under fifty, anybody <laughs> under forty. But um, you know, no. I mean, most of the most of the folks are twenties, thirties. 40s. Yeah. I just had a, 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 a guy walk by a recovery of mine that's in his 60s. So right. there's no age uh, uh, limit on it. Right. It's just that, um, you know, my son is an addict. Um, so it's personal to me. Yeah. When I'm when I'm talking last night, and, and we also, it's not just the triage either. So uh, we have caseworkers and social workers that'll send me referrals. And in the morning, I go into either Everett Hospital or Cambridge. Today, I was in both. And I check and I see. And on the sixth floor in Cambridge, there's a fellow that wants to talk to me. Uh, he has cirrhosis and he wants to do something. So I go to their room mm. and start a relationship there mm. and try to make an exit strategy. And, 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 and you're right. Not, I don't get to decide what someone wants to do. I just try to support um, what what they want to do and what they're ready to do at the time that they're, they're probably doing about the best they can with the information they have right. and being willing to work with them with that. There's enough people telling them, you know, you should, you should. Uh, the yeah. judge and everyone else is trying to tell them what they should be doing. And uh, You have to meet them where they are. Thank you. Yes. You meet them so where they true. are and then maybe... Guy, a little guidance, a little direction, That's and right. also a lot of information because they may not know that all of these other things exist, right, as you've exactly, said, right? Exactly. So it's it's uh, putting it all out there that maybe there is some hope for them. That's right. And that's, that's the right, biggest right. thing. That's the biggest thing, that yeah. there might be some hope, right? Right on. So do you work with, um, you mentioned one fellow in his 60s, so do you see any more of uh, uh, elders? And A if, lot if more so, alcoholism. Alcoholism. Um, um, and, and, there's, and, and there's a lot, you know, rightfully so, there's a lot of... Um, focus on the opioid epidemic, but alcoholism is still the great remover. I see alcoholism taking more lives. Um, what, what I think is alcohol, um, alcoholism wants you dead, but it'll be happy with you having a miserable life until yes. your liver goes, the, 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 your, your pancreas, you lose your whole family, you're homeless. Your job, so, right, right, everything. So in, in, in both um, uh, hospitals, there are folks that are constantly coming through there. And, and, and they're, they're at a place where they've really lost hope. And when I can get one of them, you know, when I can get one of them to, to, to agree finally, you know, I mean, sometimes I, you know, say, uh, I heard that you want to do, even if I didn't hear it, we'll try to, uh, you know, get them, get them to agree to it. All right, Jack. All right. All right. In other words, sometimes they get sick of hearing me and seeing me. They're like, all right, I'll go. <laughs> You know, and that's perseverance for, pays off. And that's right? fine with me. Yeah. That's fine so with me. So if, um, if when you works. get when you get some of the elders, mm. um, do they sometimes feel like they might be a lost cause? Yes, that's a good point, and I'm seeing that I'm seeing that a lot. And they some some of them get turned off because when they end up in treatment centers, is such a there's so many young people, yeah. and they can feel like they're they're you know. They don't belong. That they don't belong, right? Yeah. So I try to be mindful where I'm sending somebody and who I'm hooking them up with, you know? And and, and most of the time, um, they're definitely going to be a different, uh, uh, you know, I, I work with them differently. I, I want to meet a guy like the, uh, my friend that just walked by, is 60 years old, and have a coffee and sit down. And we can talk about the same era of things, and right. you know, same thing in drug court. Right. All the all the younger Peter folks would be talking. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So they're you know they're doing their thing, and and you know usually most most of the older guys, uh, you know, attracted to to me because we have more in common. Right. You know. Well, and they I'm, probably feel that you understand them. Plus, you've done the drill. That's right. Right. That's you, right. As you mentioned. Yep. What you say? Twenty eight years. Twenty eight years, but I always say congratulations. If I'm, if, thank you. 
if I'm not taking care of myself Tuesday, right? I'm the proud new owner of a threefold illness. If I'm not taking care of myself, my disease, right? right? On a daily basis, I don't get any extra credit for time served. And I tell the younger people that. You never arrive at the station. You know, it's this, uh, this, this um, fantasy thinking that, that you get to a place where now you can coast or you can, uh, once you get your housing, that you're okay. And then we see so many people fall off because that's where it begins. You know, so w once you get sober and get your jo a job and your home and your family back, then the work starts of go showing up for your therapy, uh, t doing your medical assisted treatment, staying on, on, on the course. Constant vigilance. Constant vigilance and not letting, dropping your guard. You can't because... take it for granted, right? No. Your sobriety? Not at all. You have all. to work at it. Right. Like we have to work at everything else. Right on. And if it's something that's important to me, the way I look at it, and, and I'm, you know, a 12-step guy, I don't try to force my belief systems on somebody, but that how I, what I think of is for 23 hours a day, I can do whatever I want, mm. have a ball. And then one hour a day, I'm giving to something for my recovery. Now, whether that's Deepak Chopra or or Marianne Williamson with Course of Miracles or right, I like 12 that you're talking my language right? now. <laughs> Course of Miracles, Al Anon. Yeah. Thank you, God, for Al Anon. Right. You know, with my son having a, a problem where, you know, um, he would get high and I would get sick. And so there's so much more. There's so, it's never ending. So let me just take a break and say that, sure. of course, we know, we've heard a lot of us about AA. Right. which is Alcoholics Anonymous, and mm -hmm. that's a 12-step group. Right. Started by Bill and Bob, right? Right, and, that's right. And then Al-Anon, if you don't know, is um, any for anyone that's been affected by someone else's drinking, right? right? Yeah. And Family. so even the people in AA more than likely qualify for seeking Al-Anon because chances are, they had You're the disease be around in their family, every day. <laughs> right? That's it right, might have been right. someone in their family, That's right. a parent or uncle or whatever. Right. right. Uh, that. That's a good point that you bring up because I have relationships with parents who have lost their children, mm -hmm. or or who th their children have left treatment after I work with them. I stay in contact with the parents to try to give them hope right. and to get them uh, uh, involved with Learn to Cope with Joanne Peterson, where she has a program for, for family of alcoholics and addicts or Al-Anon. Um, and there are so many other, pro uh, Mag Magnolia, we, there's so much available now yeah. that thank God um, that, that, that parents have a place to go to exactly to get the addict. support that they need right now so we so you, you're doing great work Joe. Oh, thank you and uh, and it's a much needed service yes. and yes. so tell us how this began with Cambridge Health Alliance so yeah. Cambridge Health Alliance partners with North Suffolk that's right like. that's and right so how did it begin initially right so so um, they um, came Cambridge Health Alliance was looking to expand uh, and because and, there was something missing with, with, with the numbers of folks coming through that was slipping through the cracks. And we got a grant uh, for a pilot program. Ah. So, so it, you know, initially it was uh, myself and another gentleman that would come in there 40 hours a week, right? And, and it was, night, it, it was uh, night shift at that time when, when we started. But it was such a success. And success hundreds, meaning... There was such an incredible need. Incredible, incredible right. need. And without paying attention, I'm not a numbers person, but they gave me feedback because every day I'm getting referrals and I'm doing outcomes. They, there's, you know, they keep track of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And 147 people were seen in the month of, you know, so they know that a big, a big piece of the puzzle is being filled with recovery coaches to such an extent that. Now in Everett Hospital, um, they're, 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 we have we, 70 hours with there. So every day of the week for 10 hours a day, there's a recovery coach there. Wow. Right. And now it's expanded to Cambridge. So we're doing what we did in Everett. So it's 40 hours here. Wow. So, so Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we have a presence there. And you have uh, some women on your team too, right? Oh, yes. I, yeah. Yes. Thank God. I, and, and, and that's a good point because I feel like especially... Uh, with the with the with the younger 
woman uh, earlier, my job is to put her hand in the hand of a woman that's been there, right? right? What, what can I speak to about being a mother? What can I speak to about the, you know, the, the individual things that, that women go through? I don't have a clue and, and I can only, the addiction piece, sure, I'll talk, but I want to put them, you know, join them with someone that'll hold their hand and walk them through the process right. or go to a meeting with them or, you know, yeah. and that's so... Who they can relate to more. Exactly, exactly. So there are three women now in, in Everett, and, and 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 we just got Carrie Ann Cavacaro. We got her in Cambridge Hospital. Now I'm so excited yeah. because it's really nice when I see someone on a Monday and I said, you know, I'm going to have uh, uh, one of our women come by and see you. I, I think you're, you're really going to hit it off, right? And then to see that relationship happen, right. you know, because it's not That's about wonderful. me or, you know, so... Getting the right people hooked up with the right people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I don't have an answer, be, you know, tell them I don't know, but I'll find out. Because doing this for 20 years, I have connections all over the place. So if I don't know, I'll find out the answer to it, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. And connect them with the, the appropriate person. Right. Well, you know, it sounds like um, a great, it's a great partnership. Mm -hmm. It sounds like uh, it's a great program. It, it sounds like it's a program that uh, there was tremendous need for, and that gap has been filled. In. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, fortunately because the program exists and can expand, unfortunately because there's such a great need for it. And we never run out of customers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. We'd, we'd like to think we're making progress there, but... And, you know, addiction is addiction, and there are a number of reasons why people get stuck in that. And uh, but the but you never lost. The, we have to celebrate the little victories. That's right, and you never you know? lost hope. 